Hey everybody, it's the Crowded Booth. I'm Bryce Kuhn alongside Mr. Will Manis. Will, how you doing, man? Good. Doing good. How are you, Bryce? I'm doing good, man. I mean, it's glad been... to have you back in Columbus. Dude, let's before we even get started. A short amount of time. A short amount of time we're back in Columbus. I'm glad because I'm telling you one thing. Georgia has got the best weather. Florida is so hot, man. It wants to kill you. Georgia's hot and muggy too. Georgia is. But anyways, this is the Crowded Booth. I'm Bryce Kuhn. Alongside Will, Will Manis, who's going to be our guest today. I appreciate you coming on. We're kind of a short notice show. Uh, but we wanted to do something because we hadn't done something in a long time. And man, we're getting ready to get this fire back up. We took a little hiatus because obviously I'm a, I guess I'm a little bit busy right now. A little bit. A little bit busy. You only graduated them. college. Only graduated college. Florida Collegiate Summer League Baseball has been really fun this uh, summer. Uh, we're going to get back into it, man. Starting with this episode, we're going to have a lot more because we gear up towards uh, college football season, which is possibly the greatest sport in America. Um, Possibly, but they don't have an all-star game. They don't. 47 days, I think it is, until kickoff. SEC Media Day, which around here in this area is essentially Christmas or uh, Thanksgiving, a big holiday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably more Thanksgiving. Probably more Thanksgiving. That comes before Christmas. Yeah, and also you want to eat, too. People have found a reason to eat here (laughs) here in the South for whatever reason it is. Yeah, Uh, But it's a lot of fun. We want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, We're going to talk a lot of things today. We're going to talk... Home Run Derby. The past This past Ooh. week we had a Home Run Derby that was just phenomenal. We're going to talk uh, the All-Star Game, why Major League Baseball did a great job of a sport that really typically doesn't market itself very well. Um, yeah, that was phenomenal. 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 Then we're going to talk about the NBA free agency, which is just, I'll tell you one thing, this is the first season in about five years, Will, that I have no idea who might win. Yeah, it's like balance has been restored in the NBA. It and, really has. Even with you know, some of the top players either going west or staying west. It still feels more balanced. And the final thing we're going to talk about today is the unfortunate injury of Jonathan Lucroy yeah. where Jake Marisnik, the outfitter for the Houston Astros, and Jonathan Lucroy, the catcher with the Los Angeles Angels. That's right. Yes. Of Anaheim. Of Anaheim. Uh, whatever they decide they want to be. <laughs> whatever but, that means. but in all sincerity, um, it was a collision at the play at the plate and Lucroy was injured. Yeah. Prayers and thoughts to him as well. We're going to talk about there was a suspension handed down to Marisnik and our thoughts um, wanting to get Will's thoughts as well as a baseball yeah. fan, what he really thought about that. But first off, we're going to tell you, we have some merchandise. Will's rocking right there, the black and white Crowded right. T-shirt. Um, it's a staple. Guys, listen, we've been around here for a year and a half now. Yeah. You need to, If you don't have the shirt by now, you need to get it. What are you doing if you don't have the shirt? I don't know. What are you doing if you don't have the shirt? Um, we also, you know, are going to be coming out with some new shirts maybe soon, so you might want to grab that. Maybe. We'll let you know in the coming days. If you're not following us on Facebook, you need to. We're Facebook Live right now. We thank you for watching. And one thing, if you're listening on iTunes or SoundCloud, I want to thank you for listening in as well. We appreciate all that. We appreciate all your support. None of this would be able to happen without the viewers and my mom. So my mom does a great job. So we want to thank everyone for uh, listening and watching as well. Thanks, Miss Courtney. Um, and your your mom. Best. Your mom listens. My mom shared. Mom, your mom, my mom shared. shared. Listen, people, sharing on Facebook is how we're going to get out there. That's right. It is. I shared it. My mom shared mine. I haven't seen any more shares. But my grandmother does sometimes. My mom shared it. So that's, that's big. It's out there to her friends. That's big. Yeah, for all <laughs> for all of Miss Manis's friends. That's right. Yes, but we're going to go ahead and jump in here. Will, the Home Run Derby this past week was oh just... Oh, my gosh. Listen, that was a show. That was probably the best Home Run Derby I've seen in... Gosh, I... In your 21 years old. Yeah. How, how, Man. How, how's it been? Uh, the only one that I can really remember being exciting like that was Josh Hamilton's. Yeah, yeah. In Yankee Stadium, or that one, or um, is it the year before, or year after that one when they had in Pittsburgh? You mm-hmm. have Ryan Howard, uh, I think Vlad Guerrero Sr. was in that Which one. Is crazy I think. to think that his son, those two hit were really ninety-one home runs and didn't win. It didn't win. He didn't I have win. a round by round breakdown. I'm going to go through real quick, and I want you to tell me the most unfortunate thing is that Yelich was not able to be in it. They put Matt Chapman in, who was completely outclassed. It was a 29 to Chapman 13 hits, run. Ch- to hit 13 home runs, though, that's good. I mean, when you know, like, hours before you're going to be <laughs> yeah, in it. Yeah, yeah. No practice like Yelich had some practice. And then I didn't, you know, I, I don't know. We, we have a friend who thinks very highly of Christian Yelich. We think he's a great player. I think he's an amazing player. I think he's a great player. But our friend... Uh, has gone on the record several times to say that he is the best player in baseball, which I think is not true. We're going to bring um, this person on soon because I really want to see them yeah. in will debate. That's, um, that's been must watch. But Facebook Live anyway, I, the dude claims he has a sore back, so he can't be in the home run derby, but yet yeah. he plays in the All Star game and did nothing, by the way, in the layoff spot. Um, you know, 
Dave Roberts had the best leadoff hitter in baseball on his team, but he decided to bat him ninth. I don't know what that's about. Well, I think Dave Roberts went on record saying that this best leadoff hitter in baseball, Ronald Acuna Jr., yeah. uh, I think he said that he had to pay his dues, which is the biggest what is that malarkey I've ever heard of? He got life. voted in as a starter. For At the 21 game. years old, yeah, the guy gets voted on. in. I mean, it's ridiculous. Um, but yeah, we're talking. I mean, the home run derby was phenomenal. And you have a guy, the best thing I've ever seen, Vlad Guerrero Jr., Jock Peterson, 40 to 39, a three overtime. Yeah. Semi Went to the matchup. swing off. And the, they were gassed. That was, I, I think that was the first swing off ever since they went to this new. The new, new style. Um, yeah, the new style new for the home run derby, which, you know, the time yeah. and all that Must, stuff. Must. I mean, to say must-see TV was an understatement. If you missed that, I, I feel bad for you because especially the last few years, the home run derby is just kind of boring. Like, yeah, we've seen guys hit home runs. But this, I mean, I think this is what they were wanting when yeah. they changed to this format, something yeah. just incredible like this. Um, that, I mean, to go to three, put three overtime basically, uh, just incredible. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing, too, is it shows off the talent the Major League has and the young talent, yes, too. To that's have, been something that's been lacking. To know? have um, Vlad Jr. in it, to have Ronald Acuna Jr. in it, to have Josh Bell in it, who's Pete Alonso. breaking out. Pete Alonso. <laughs> Rookie of the year. It. Rookie of the year. Pete Alonso? Maybe. maybe. Uh, I like Mike Soroka for I know you do, but Pete Alonso is <laughs> really good. Home runs uh, get votes, not strikeouts. Pete Alonso is the lone bright spot for that New York Mets well, organization. Well, they got Jeff McNeil. He'll probably, he might win the batting title. Well, this is the same Mets organization that honored the 69 Miracle Mets and put two people up. They, for oh, people who don't know, my gosh. the New York Mets did a thing the other, the, what was it, last week? Right before I the think All-Star so. Break. Well, one right before the they did this thing where they honored the 69 Miracle Mets, the team that won the World Series. 50-year anniversary. 50-year anniversary. anniversary. World Series. Then they have it in memoriam, little PowerPoint slide, and a little <laughs> dedication to... The people who are no longer with us, and so they put the players up there. Well, they put two guys who are still living. <laughs> they were on the field as part of this, and they put them in a in memorial. I mean, oh come my on, gosh. Come and then on. you know the Mets. It even trickles down to their minor league team. They started a fire trying to do fireworks for Fourth of July. It's, yeah, it's the Mets. I don't understand. It's I, don't, ridiculous. I don't get it. This is a this is a major league baseball franchise that can literally seem like they do nothing right. They can't do anything right, and they're admired at fourth place. And it's not it's not just their on field play; it's off the field. It's everything. It's it, whatever. Let move on. Let's move, move on. on. But move on. The talent was there. I think, and I'm going to ask you this, and I want to get your little piece on this and spiel. This major league baseball has trouble marketing itself. You have the best yeah, player I, in the game in Mike Trout, who a lot of people don't couldn't tell the difference between him and Ninja. The yeah, Twitch streamer. well, I mean, to be fair, Mike Trout has now cut his hair like Ninja for, for whatever reason. As long as he doesn't die, I don't care. <laughs> but Mike Trout, the best player in baseball, you know, he's not a recognizable face like a LeBron. Yeah. Like a, um, Which, it's not because... Who, Tom Brady. The dude's 6'5". I mean, yeah. if you see him, you should know who he is. But And for us, we probably know who he is, being big fans of baseball. Yeah. But I think the biggest thing you're going to see is you're going to have these big-time players that come in, and you're going to see... They don't really get the recognition outside of the baseball world right. off the diamond. For you, though, what do you feel like that this All Star game, which some thought it was a, a you know a dud, it was a low scoring affair, but it was a great yeah. game, yeah. really good game. Well, what did you think that home run derby and All Star game did for baseball that you know maybe not would have happened without that? I haven't seen the TV ratings, but I would I would go to say that these were probably some of the best ratings that they've had in in recent years and. I mean, that should be dominating TV because mm-hmm. nothing else is happening those Monday and Tuesday nights. Yeah. Um, in the middle of July. Yeah. The NBA's July. over. The NBA's over. Um, I mean, granted, the NBA tried to, to hijack it and, and keep the headlines. Uh, Gee, yeah, the free agency is crazy. Free agency. But it just – I hope it boosts the brand of, yeah. of baseball. Uh, if you tuned in and watched it, I mean – if you had kind of gotten bored of it, like I, I, I was bored of the home run derby. I didn't even plan on watching it. Watching yeah. it, I'm glad yeah. I did, because it was can't miss. Uh, I watched most of the All Star game. I wanted to see Freddie Freeman and, and Ronald Acuna, which um, that's kind of the whole point, right? You want to watch your your, your team's players. Yeah, you want to. But guys. it also you get to see the stars of the whole league, um, and what Fox does, I think, is great uh, for the Mike game. Liking the players, it's kind of it's kind of it's great, but it's kind of weird. You're hearing Freddie you're, Freeman talk during his event with Justin Verlander. That was, could, he could, Justin Verlander's hard enough to hit yeah. when you're not mic'd up. But then when you got to talk, yeah. Freeman didn't get the bat off his shoulder. Yeah. I mean, that's cool, but it's, it's, it's weird. I'm it not used weird. to it yet. Yeah. Um, 
them interviewing the three Astros when they were on the field at the same time was awesome. Just hear, to hear the banter. Yeah. That's that's what baseball's lacking. That's why they're struggling. Uh, they're falling behind. The NBA uh, just embraces the personalities. Baseball mm-hmm. has not. And um, uh, there's a lot of good attitudes and, and good role models, yeah. but you don't know it. You just see how they carry themselves on the field. They could be totally different in the locker room. Um, but I think that's what they got to do a better job of, and I think they're doing a great job in the All Star game. Yeah. Of having, you know, the time and the place to do that. You can't. You obviously can't do that in a, a regular game. No, you can't. And I think you said, like you said, it right. You hit the nail right on the head with what they were talking about. This is a uh, league that has struggled really to get their personalities out there. Everyone knows mm-hmm. how Bryce Harper is. Everyone knows how these guys are. By the way, Bryce Harper not even in the All Star game. They had the banner that had his picture. Like you don't think that, that they could have? I know it's a big banner. Yeah, but come on, guys. Like, yeah. let's go. But I mean, I agree with you. And you talk they about should this. Learn, don't make the banner before the voting is over. Yeah, don't make. The, this is guy who didn't make the cut. Like for the yeah. final three out yeah. voters. Um, but yeah, it's interesting to see. You know, had the the guys here. You know, a lot of people, Braves fans in this area. Braves well represented. Mike Soroka, John, uh, J- Ronald Acuna Jr. Yeah. Not John. I don't know who John who, who, is. Who? Is that his brother who looks just like him? Yeah, it's his but brother. But three inches taller? Exactly. <laughs> um, and then Freddie Freeman. I mean, that's really cool. Brian Snicker at the game as well. That was probably the best part. Yeah. I mean, Him being able to experience A lifer, that. man. Just to finally get some, some recognition yeah. like that is awesome to see. Yeah, it's really cool. And I think the biggest thing, too, is you're going to see baseball is going to become a little more marketable. These young stars, let the kids play is real. And yeah. it's a real thing. You're going to see these young guys... And there's more coming up. Yeah. There's more. Which there's, is, and there's not only the Braves that we talk league. about all the time, but it's across the baseball. League. It's incredible. I mean, it's exciting to, to see and look forward to. One thing I think the league, I, I would be a fan of, and uh, people like my dad, who's uh, a baseball purist, you know, yeah. old school baseball, when he was younger, you didn't have interleague play. And yeah. so it was really special to see American League and National League play. Well, yeah. now you do. And yeah. so you, you the All-Star game was a chance for you to see the – National League guys play the American League guys, and that's like the only time you could have your dream scenarios of seeing. Right. Um, in our case now, you'd see a Justin Verlander face a Freddie Freeman. Yeah. Um, you wouldn't have to wait for the World Series. So or it's a, a taste of what yeah. you could and see. I, I think that'd be kind of cool to see. We throw interleague play in there, and even when we were younger, you had it like maybe one series in July. Yeah, it's and like, now it's one like week. sprinkled. Yeah, yeah, and then you get sprinkled all in. I mean, um, Atlanta obviously played Cleveland earlier this year, mm-hmm. and it's think, just is that the only AL team we played. I don't even know. I don't know. It's not good. I don't know. It's not good. But, yeah, so as we transition, you talked about how the NBA tried to steal some headlines yeah. from Major Baseball. Man, free agency is crazy. It's like the NBA, it's like everybody's out there playing NBA 2K. The video it's wild. Game. It, Overri- it just, and overriding trades. I mean, the one that shocked me the most was Russell Westbrook to Houston. I mean, And that's that, the most recent one, too. Yeah. That, that was my – I mean, just – to go interconference, inter divit well, they're not the same division, but interconference. Yeah. Um, rivals. Rivals, yeah, going into a full on rebuild in Oklahoma City and, and to give Westbrook who the stats aren't there, the accolades aren't there. Well the stats are there, but the accolades aren't there. But I, I think one of the better one of the best point guards in the NBA to trade him to the team that you traded a guy who ended up becoming one of the best shooting guards in the game and now you're teaming up Russell Westbrook and James Harden again. That's the NBA is gonna be fun again. It is, and I think with the injuries to Golden State, uh, there in the last part of the finals, Kawhi moving to LA with the, him and Paul George with the Clippers. The Clippers Staples Center is gonna be a hot place to be. It's yeah. gonna be a, a, it's gonna be bumping, as some might say, yeah. or popping, as some <laughs> might say. As I know, one of my friends from college says that all the time. It's gonna be interesting to see, though. You know, L- Staples Center is gonna be a highlight show every night. I mean, it's gonna be prime oh, yeah. time every single night. Yeah. Um, Sam Presti, the general manager from the Thunder, though, has an interesting situation now. He has a boatload of picks. Oh, and I'll tell you one thing. For a team that wants to rebuild, you're rebuilding the right way. They're going all through the draft. They have so many picks to work yep. with. And they have Shea Gilgis-Alexander, which is a good – he's a good he's player. He's a good foundational build, uh And I think they he's... trade Chris Paul. I do, too. It's tough with that contract. So much money. I don't know who would want that in L.A. Maybe he wants to go to L.A. The Knicks? Oh, Are the Knicks going to get somebody? Can we talk about that for a second? <laughs> the New York Knicks – they Talk about traded Chris Depps. Out. They traded Chris Stapps for Zingas to Dallas for cap space, and they couldn't get anything. They got Julius Randle and Marcus Morris. Marcus oh. Morris. I like Julius Randle, though. 
Julius Randle's a good player, but it's when you, you have your eyes. You can't do it on his own. When, when two months ago you had your eyes set on having Kyrie, K, KD, and Zion Williamson, and you get none of it. You get none of that. You get absolutely none of it. I think uh, the New Orleans Pelicans are the luckiest team in the NBA. Agreed. They lock. They luck into the number one pick. They get to take yeah. Zion, and then they still trade Anthony Davis. And, listen, and they get a, a massive. They have ball. a whole core. I mean, like they don't need to go rebuild. I the think draft. they're a playoff team. They're good. as good as the West is. I think they can get in the playoffs. And you talk about the good as the West is. And I'll go back to what I said about Golden State. Golden State had the injuries, obviously. Clay Thompson, KD leaves. Yeah. Brooklyn to me is not going to be a real threat this upcoming season. No. Next year, let's look out yeah. for them. Kyrie can't. To me, Kyrie cannot. He doesn't have the ability to carry a team by himself. No, they'll make the playoffs. They'll make the playoffs in a week east. Um, to Toronto. They lose Kawhi. They'll take a few steps back, but they'll Pascal they'll Siakam be the playoffs. Is good. Pascal Siakam is I a think, good player. I think they got a, then probably a conference finals run in this team. Philly's going to be good again. Yes. Um, be. Boston adding Kimba Walker, losing Kyrie. Personally, now personally, this is me. People can disagree with me. That's the beauty of having a show live on Facebook because you can just go ahead and tell me you don't agree with what I'm saying. I think Kyrie Irving is a worse fit. Or I think Kimba Walker. I'll say it like this is a better fit for Boston than Kyrie is. I think so, too. But they don't have Al Horford, which was kind of the glue he went to of Philly. that. And he went I think Philly. had they been able to keep Al Horford and bring in Kimball Walker, just having that those two veterans that yeah. are team-first guys would have kind of corrected all the chemistry issues You're right. with them. You're but right. they get one of the two, and they got a point guard, they got a leader, they got a guy that's going to right the ship. Set the vision for the team. And you still have Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Gordon Hayward. Who, he, so listen, much guys, talent. Gordon Hayward was coming off an awful injury. Now he's got a full year. Let's see what he does. He was, like, he was one of the best bench players in the league last yeah. year. Also, you know who's pretty good? I know we're going quickly through this. There's just so much to go through, though. Yeah. Utah. The Utah Jazz added Mike Conley. They finally got a point guard. Donovan Mitchell's going to be so much better. He's going to have someone to play oh, yeah. off of. He doesn't have to play kind of hero ball. Yeah. They Rudy also, Gobert, defender? Yes, that's um, exactly unreal. what I was going to say. Words out of my mouth. And so I think they're going to be really good. I know we're speeding through this. Milwaukee and, will be really good. Yeah, they got a guy, a guy named uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Antetokounmpo? Antetokounmpo. I just got it right. Can, can I get that in Scrabble? How many Scrabble points? How many Scrabble points can you get? Hey, let us know in the comments <laughs> below. Giannis Antetokounmpo, how many Scrabble points do you think <laughs> it's worth? The closest one? Um, you'll get a shout out on the show. <laughs> you'll get a shout out on the show. But yeah, they're gonna be really good. How about the Miami Heat getting Jimmy Butler? What really, what really blew my mind? It's like everything was a sign and trade. Yeah. Which yeah. don't forget about D Load the Warriors. That was a sign yeah. Trade. But go ahead and talk about that. Mike. I just, to me, it didn't make a lot of. I don't want to word this. It made sense, but it was more so kind of against the grain of what the NBA had become. All the super mega personalities, like all the guy players, worry about me, me, me. Don't don't care about these teams. I'm leaving. They can do whatever they want to do. Mm-hmm. But it's like, these guys were willing to sign and trade to help their former teams. It's uh, it, it was kind of shocking. I mean, especially like Jimmy Butler, a guy that came in you know mid season to the 76ers and was willing to do a sign and trade to get to Miami instead of just going because Miami freed up the space for him to come in by getting rid of Hassan Whiteside. Portland Trailblazers. Yeah, C.J. McCollum, kind of Damian Lillard. Now. Listen, I love I, – one of my buddies, Noah Severson, he watches the show, he listens to it. He's been on a couple times. He's a huge Portland fan, and I our fan. And I, tra- I texted him. I was like, listen, Portland might have a chance to do something. As Golden State Even loses, in a strong people, West. A very Portland strong is a team to watch out for, too, man. I mean, they added um, Kent Bazemore from Atlanta, who's – I mean, he's not the glue best guy. One. He's a glue guy. He's a good 3 and D guy. Mm-hmm. It's going to be really interesting to watch, though. I'm excited. I'm really excited. Just so much to talk about and just kind of a whirlwind. <laughs> it's crazy. As, as flustered as you see us right now, that is exactly what the, the – I mean, it seems like – That's what the it was of like trying to bombs, keep up with the headlines. The amount of woge bombs that took oh. place was wild. It was crazy. I'm surprised Twitter didn't crash. <sighs> crazy. I'll tell you one thing, though. Twitter is going to go crazy when Chris Paul gets traded. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I think we're, it's going to be interesting to see where he goes. He'll probably get traded. I don't see him sticking in OKC with oh, what yeah. their vision is. Um, nope, and with all hey, that money. All that money? I'll tell you this. A team that had an amazing draft and is going to be very, very good. The Atlanta Hawks. Yes, I agree. The Atlanta Hawks, I'm telling you guys, 
Trey Young, Kevin Herter, DeAndre Hunter, Cam Reddish, John Collins. You're telling me that's not a, an amazing core? Listen, I got an email today from Atlanta Hawks tickets. Email? An email. Yeah, they still send those. You still get emails? I still get emails. Atlanta Hawks, New Orleans, New Orleans Pelicans, October 7th preseason game. That's going to be unreal. Four of the top ten picks be are going to be there. sellout in the it's preseason be a sellout. game. <laughs> a sellout at State Farm Arena in the preseason, which is going to be crazy. The, the one concern with the Hawks will be defense. regression. Yeah. Defense. Like, defense. Because Trey Young, great in the second half last year. Yeah. I'm expecting him to take a step back. Kevin Porter, really good. Expect him to take another step back. And you never the know with the league's going to adjust. Rookies. The league will adjust. And you never know with these rookies. Yeah. Cam you don't know. Reddish, DeAndre Hunter. You never know. And it's a team in Atlanta that has three first-round picks next year. <laughs> and the free agent class for this upcoming season, I haven't looked at a lot of it, but I know it's not as strong as or, or, as what we've seen in the past. Right. I think Atlanta's going to build up these young guys, and then they're going to be in a similar situation where, say, in two years, they're going to add a veteran star that is going to complete that team and mm-hmm. maybe make a you know the conference finals run or something like that. But they could yeah. be a playoff team this yeah. year. We'll see. I think so. That's the beauty of what's going to happen in the NBA because you're going to see guys who – or see teams – that weren't even the conversation last year, the Lakers, Anthony Davis, LeBron, they honestly filled out that bench pretty nice. I was yeah. concerned because it looked yeah. like for a while there it was going to be Anthony Davis and LeBron and, and Kyle Kuzma, and that was it. And then p- take your pick of somebody walking yeah, back. Yeah, take, take, yeah, take your pick. Whoever gets this first first ten fans <laughs> can dress up in, in the purple and gold. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it feels like that's how the Lakers have been running things the last couple of years. Yeah, oh, jeez. <laughs> we, we, we can talk about that some other time. Yeah. The last thing, though, as we wrap up here on this quick episode, well, I want to get your thoughts on this real quick, and I'm just going to kind of set the tone of what happened. Uh, last week in a contest, I think it was – I can't remember if it was before the All-Star break or after. It, it was right before the All-Star, right before the All-Star break. One of, the, one of the last few games. Angels are playing the Astros, and uh, I think it's a tie ball game or, or it was a close ball game. Tied or one run game. Yeah, like balls hit. Jake Marisnik comes rounding third. Now Jake Marisnik so is a guy. Fly. Sack fly. I know nothing about the details apparently, but <laughs> Jake Marisnik come on man tags up on third. Team? If you know Jake Marisnik, you've seen him play. He goes 110 he miles hard. all the time. Plays hard. Great defender. He comes in and he has to make a choice. He's forced to make a choice between going left or right. And you can watch the replay. He chooses to go to the left side of home plate, the which inside, is the inside yeah. towards the field, and the ball comes up the line, and Jonathan Lucoy has to come down to go get it. Of course, if you haven't seen what happened yet, go look it up on Twitter, YouTube, anything. He gets hit. Lucoy, I mean, he it looked like a fullback running yeah, over somebody just in the a hole. huge collision. Terrible Not like collision. we've seen in baseball in several years. I'll say this. The new rule that you cannot block the plate, I feel like – that went into a little bit of it because you had – I feel like it went into a little bit of it because you, now you have a situation where he they not, he's not expecting to get run over. Right. Yeah. And so that's something that he's not expecting to happen. Mm-hmm. But still, Marisden got suspended. Yeah. The, if you go back Two and watch games. it, the guy's just trying to score. He even issued an apology. Yeah. But I don't think there was intent there to run no. – Did he know he was going to run him over? Yeah, but it's the same thing in my view of targeting – some questionable calls. Are there some where it's just blatant? Yes, yes. completely. You don't want to hurt people. Yeah, I don't I don't think Marisnik was intending to decleat Jonathan Luke, no. which it ended up being what he did because he's a big dude. He's 6'4", 6'3", 6'4". Of course. Um, but, you know, when you look at it, you can see his arms are kind of stretched out like he's trying to go into his slide. Um, and then he runs his last second. He's not going he to be able yeah, to. Yeah, he can't. Um, I saw there was somebody that uh, – that I'm friends with on, on Twitter. Um, That's at Manus underscore world. Yes. Yeah. If you want to call me. Um, who's, his opinion was that that was the dirtiest hit he has ever seen and that Marisnik should be banned from baseball. Did he see what Pete Rose did in the All-Star game? I, in an All-Star game. game. Into that guy's career. Yeah. Or, more or less. Ken, Kim, and I'm going to get this right my dad's going to be Is it Ken? Ken Caminiti. I believe. Did it Greg Olson? Olson? Yes. Like, listen, it's, and this is my thing, too. If you have, what was it, 2011, 2010, Buster Posey gets hit oh, by Scott okay. Cousins. And here's, here's the thing. Scott Cousins, I think, if I, I think that's his yeah, name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's one of those guys that wants to run catchers over. Jake Marisnik does not 
come off to me as a guy that wants to do it. There's some guys, Ken Caminiti, probably one of them, that looks for that contact, that yeah. looks to run over the catcher. And to me, that's part of the game. I don't think you need to have the guys that are looking to, you know, just destroy guys and end their career. But guys that aren't afraid of a little contact to score yeah. a run, I mean, that I think that's kind of the beauty of the game. It's a tactical game, but it's also good to see the physicalities of the game. Yeah. And you those, have top flight athletes yeah. playing at breakneck speed. You, I don't, baseball, it's going to happen. Yeah. Gonna, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I didn't love the rule when they came up with it. I mm-hmm. think it was just, oh, we got a marketable star. We've been one, talking about doing this. Now we have a reason to do it. Let's do it. Um, they would have done that if it was Greg Olson. No. No. Like they would have met them. Um, I think the rule has helped, but it's also hurt the game in that way because you see a lot of times guys are just giving up. They don't know what to do. When they're about to score, when they're trying to score a run, the ball beats them and they just pull up, you know, instead of trying to score the run. Um, and to me, the Marisnik hit, the Kim Caminiti hit, the uh, Cousins on Posey hit, mm-hmm. those are outliers. The Pete yeah. Rose, outlier. Um, but it, it does clean up the guys that are look kind of like the, the dirty enforcers. players. Yeah, the yeah. enforcers like in hockey. Yeah. Um, cleans those guys up. But should he be banned from baseball? No. Should That's he have been the suspended? most outlandish thing I've ever heard. Should he have been suspended maybe one game because you have the rule in place? But yeah. two, kind of a lot. Um, me, personally, yeah, you hate to see a guy get hit like that and Jonathan Lucroy yeah. shaking up like that. Um, but, you know, part of baseball. It is part of baseball. contact sport. Yeah, and it is part of baseball, and it really, it really, you know, is unfortunate. And I really hope that John Luco is okay. Yeah. Uh, but for Jake Marisnik to get suspended, and for people to come after him, listen, stay in your mom's basement and just turn the computer off and sit on try the to try to learn and move on. some about these guys. Yeah, you know? learn, I mean, because most guys don't want that to happen. You're right. Most guys You're don't right. want to barrel over the catcher, and I think Marisnik is one of those guys. Yeah. I don't think he just said that because that's the right thing to say. Yeah. You know, I think he he really did not mean to, you know, just barrel over him like that, but he's a big dude. What's he going to do? You're right. You're right indeed, Will. I appreciate you coming on. It's been a quick Thanks episode. Yeah. Uh, it's been a lot of fun, though. Make sure to follow us on all social media. Will, throw out your Twitter handle real quick. They can give you a follow. At Manis, M-A-N-E-S-S, underscore Will. That's W-I-L-L. Yeah. One N, two S is on the last name. Yeah, give him a follow. Give myself a follow if you'd like. I don't care if it, it's okay. At under, <laughs> Bryce underscore Coon. Uh, and then follow us at the Crowded Booth. We're going to have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We're all around. Right now we're going to hit up some cool spots in the Orlando, Central Florida area. We're going to be at some minor league games this week. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to have some more people on the show as well as we get closer and closer to college football. I know Will's going to join us again yeah. uh, once we hit August, and it's going to be a ton of fun. Yeah. yeah, thanks for having me. I enjoyed it. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure if you want to grab yourself a T-shirt, you can hit us in our direct messages. Yes, please slide into our DMs. If you'd like a t-shirt uh, or email us at thecrowdedbooth at gmail.com. We want to thank you for listening. Stay subscribed. And everyone, have a blessed day. And football's right around the corner, man. It's Ooh, can't wait. Can't wait. See y'all. Y'all have a good one.